Part two, ranking. This time around, dynamic ranking. So in the previous video, we discussed static ranking. So what I'm going to show you, so rather than telling you what, um, just telling you what dynamic rank is, I'm going to show you the actual problem with our static ranking. And then I'm going to show you how to implement a dynamic ranking. So as you can see, as per our previous video, we have a ranking over here. Um, so this is a static ranking. So if I now want to rank, let's say I want to filter the page by, I want to see sales for 2011 and 2014. And let's say we want to see it for bikes. Or let's say clothing. So now you can see the ranking here doesn't start at one. It starts each of these products are now ranked. Um, you can see it actually starts for my filter selection. It actually starts at 114. It actually skips a couple of numbers. So if I look at bikes, you can see it starts at one, two, three, four, five. Then seven or 64, uh, 13 is missing. If I do it for, two, for, two, for 2010, you can see there's some missing there. So this is the problem with static ranking. So now I'm going to show you how to implement dynamic ranking. As you can remember from the first video, for static ranking, we added a calculated column. And when you do a filter, uh, it doesn't actually change to the context of your filter. So because it was a calculated column, we were kind of stuck. But for dynamic ranking, we are actually going to create a measure, a global measure. But before we dive into that, I need to explain to you a little bit more about the data model. So you can see what's going on. I have a better sense. So we have the sales, the fact, and then we have the product. The product is divided into the actual product, uh, the subcategory, and the product category. To give you an example of that, let's look at this um, Excel spreadsheet. So we got a, here are all the products, to, but let's start at the category. We have product categories. We have bikes. That's a product category. Um, bikes consists of three types of subcategory. It's a mountain bike, road bike, and a touring bike. Then for each one of these subcategories, we have, to have the actual product. So here's a list of all the road bikes, all the products. Here's a list of all the mountain bikes. Here's a list of all the touring bikes. Okay. So before we jump into that, we're going to use a function called is in scope, a DAX function. But I need to give you a little bit of context around what this function actually means before we can proceed. So what is the in scope function? It's actually quite simple. It's a very handy function. It basically checks if the column has the column has only one value in the current filter context. Okay, so to give you an example, I'm going to run this DAX query over here. So you can see I'm simulating uh, I'm simulating here a pivot table with the product name from the DIM product, and basically I'm checking if the product name is in scope. Yes. Is the product category in scope? Yes or no. And is the product subcategory name in scope? Yes or no. Let's quickly see what this will return. As you can see, because the report is filtering only on product, there's one product for each product over there, which makes sense. But category is false and subcategory is false because there are multiple, um, there, there are, it's not the correct hierarchy, not the correct grain. So if I, for instance, now let's enable category here. So now you're going to see that category is true because now we're filtering by category as well, but subcategory is not true. If I now go and I also introduce subcategory, all of them are going to be true. Okay, so now taking that, we are now going to write the DAX formula. So now let's go back to Power BI. So let's say sales measure, let's say new, new measure. Cool. So the measure I'm going to add is actually quite simple. It's going to be product rank. So we're going to rank the product, but dynamically. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if it is in scope, if the product is in scope. So basically, if the product, if we have the product name as a row, as a filter, so if true, then we're going to start selecting this. If false, return nothing. So this will only return a result if the product name is in our filter context. Okay. So then we get the current sales amount, which is simply the sales amount measure. Now we're going to go and we're going to rank um, the product, all products selected. So we're going to say rank X, all selected based on the sales amount. Awesome. So now we're going to return the results. If it is not blank, so we basically only want to do this for anything with a sale, then return product rank, otherwise return nothing. And if we do that, we're going to have the measure. 
Oh, I think I already have this measure. Let's call it dynamic 2. I'm going to quickly bring it in over here. It's going to drag it in there. Where is it? So we say bring it into the rank static. So you can see, actually, it's already working. So dynamic 2, um, actually now, ra it's ranking the products based on the filter context. Let's change the filter context to 2012. Let's see, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. You see, that's a problem. So how do we address that problem? So this is because the sales amount is the same for them. But you can see already versus static, this is giving us the result we want. So how do we fix this repetitive thing in it as, as over there? Because it's skipping 9, 10, 11 because it found duplicates there. So what I'm going to show you there is I'm just going to go into this measure. And we are going to add to the measure. Let's quickly see. What we'll do is we will say give you a little example you're going to say Doop. you can see rank x takes a table expression a value and order we're not going to give it a, a value so we're going to skip that the order we're not going to give it an order but the ties that's what we're going to give it so we're just going to make the ties dense cool you say okay because what, what we did there is we just basically told it what to do with that not to skip anything so now you can see one two three four five seven seven and eight if I, for instance, now that's exactly the result we want, but let's quickly go back to that measure. The other option that you could see was skip. Skip. What does it do when it skips? Let me quickly show you. It's going to simply skip all those numbers. That was the default behavior we saw earlier. You can see, so 7, 8, because they have the same sales amount, it's skipping 9 and 10. But we don't want that. We want it to include 9 and 10, so we're just going to make it dense. There we go. As you can see, exactly as we expected. So if we filter it by that, it's always going to return based on the filter, which is really cool. We're now going to move on dynamic ranking of the categories within a product line. So for instance, if I look at my product categories over here, um, I want to see these products being ranked within its category for buy, but other categories, let's say jackets, need to have a ranking within that category of itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new measure. Okay, and that measure is called rank and category dynamic in this case. So first thing, we create a variable to understand what the current sales context is, and this is a measure, so we dynamically know based on the filter context what that amount would be. So in order for us to actually do the ranking we need to change the table that the ranking iterates through so we create a products in category table and this is this variable over here which is a calculate table function this calculate table function basically gives us a list of all the products we remove the filter context of the product names all other filters and we have all of the products in that uh, product table selected and we create a, a list of values of the category so let's quickly go to DAX to show you what the result is of that so if I take that little variable then I run it in DAX studio you can see basically it gives us a nice table 606 rows with all of the products okay but it's a calculated table and that calculated table will be driven by what we select okay so this is what we have here. So this is a table that we feed into the rank X formula. So first of all, what we do is you saw this in the previous measure. We basically only show calculation if our grain starts with the product. So if the product is in scope, the product name is in scope. Once, If it's not in scope, so if we have a category, then it's not going to rank it at all. And then we say rank X through this product is category table. So we change that context and we base it on the sales amount. I just want to quickly add, remember the dense things. We're not going to do a value. We're not, and we're going to do a dense. Yes, that's what we want in case we have duplicate sales amounts. And then the last variable would be 
we only do this for, we only show this where there's an actual sales amount. If there's no sales amount, we don't show anything and we return the result. There we go. Let's quickly test it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this new Uber over here. I'm just going to drop it in there. So let's say for bikes. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper. So let's go to clothing. So clothing, let's select clothing. You can see within clothing, let's say clothing and bikes. If everything is correct, you'll see multiple number one. So you can see, let's quickly bring the category in here as well. Let's say category up in here. Cool. So now you can see the two categories. See, it's returning nothing because it's not in scope. It's in scope for um, the actual product. So you can see there's a number one. So road 150, rate 48 is number one within context of bikes. But for clothing, number one is women's mountain shorts. And you can see whatever context we create, it doesn't jump context at all. 